Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry as fuck, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show episode 114 on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters in the Mayhem studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. A video producer here with some local uh, wrestling promotions. But with me is the voice of an Inspire Pro Wrestling, currently uh, residing in San Antonio, Texas. He is Eamon Payton. Hello, Sor. I'm very happy to be back here on the Indie Mayhem Show. We will have a lot to talk about this the oh. indie wrestling I saw later. You uh, in- we got a good interview online. But yeah, this should be a fun show. You indeed out the weekend, and it sounds like it's going to be tremendous. But, of course, check out this and so much more. A lot of the discussion over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show or the other shows that we're doing and check out the other columns. And you can also check out actually over at IndieWrestling.us. We also post the show there. And Around the Indies with Matt Carlins is a great article where you can kind of find out everything that goes on over the weekend. Drop us a line, uh, Indie Wrestling, people you should talk to, interviews, interview questions for people that we have coming up on the show at 412 206 WMS Zero or Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. Amen. Who do we have on this week? Uh, we got a very special guest this week uh, from my neck of the woods. Uh, uh, up and coming professional wrestler. Uh, very cool to get to have him on to sort of talk about uh, the stuff he's been doing in, in the world of wrestling across Texas and, and even beyond that. Uh, very excited to have him on. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Evening Mayhem Show, Mr. Cody Crash. Cody, how are you? Doing good, man. How are you? Doing pretty well. Uh, very excited to have you on and then sort of talk the stuff you've been doing. Um, so, uh, I guess the first way we kind of first way we kind of sort of start off the show is is kind of an icebreaker or question of sorts uh, to kind of get an idea of like how you kind of got into pro wrestling in the first place. And uh, uh, what's your first ever memory of watching pro wrestling? Um, so I'm originally from Oklahoma, so. My best friend, when I was like nine years old, showed me some ECW tapes on like a VHS. So ever since probably about nine years old, I watched like, I think the first one was like Jerry Lynn. So I got into wrestling at nine years old. Very cool. And and I guess that kind of ECW sort of underground style of things, was that kind of the stuff that interested you a bit more when you kind of watched wrestling more? Yeah, yeah, it, it did, you know, because I thought it was, you know, cool, like hardcore and all that stuff. But now, you know, it, you know, I'm kind of, no, not so much into hardcore, so. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I, I guess uh, I from there, I guess your transition to becoming a pro wrestler, when, it, when did you kind of have that decision of uh, deciding that you wanted to train for the first time? Um, shoot. So I was like 13, and I was like, I really wanted to be a pro wrestler. So when I graduated my high school when I was 18, I immediately moved down to Austin to start training like two months out of high school. And then so I've been I've been doing it for about a little over a year and a half now, coming up on two in September. Awesome. And then you, you've started with uh, uh, George and Elisa out of Austin, if I'm correct. Yes, sir. Yeah, I found, I found him on the internet and I called him and then, me and him discussed and all that stuff. So, like, right in there, I got a job, like, so quickly, and I moved down there. And it's been a blast ever since. Awesome. Uh, was there anything, I guess, you didn't expect when it came to training? Anything that you kind of were surprised by when it came to actually getting in the ring and training? Man, I, I was kind of like, you know, you know, I was younger. I was like a super mark. So I, I didn't know. I mean, I knew I was getting into, but I didn't really know what I was getting into because I never bumped on a ring. Mm-hmm. So that was very unexpected when I, when I took my very first bump. So, but it wasn't until two months I took a bump on a ring because I started out like in a park <laughs> learning uh, <laughs> and everything. So it was a, uh, so that's what I didn't really expect it, you know, the bumps and uh, on how bad your neck hurts the next two or three weeks after bumping. Definitely. So, that was pretty much. And then, you know, still still getting things that are unexpected randomly. So since I'm on, you know, going on shows now and everything now. Totally. Uh, to, to work, I guess, with George Elise, because like, he's a somebody, for those that don't know, I've trained, you know, extensive amount of talents that come from Texas. Guys like ACH have 
you know, started with him, Ricky Sarks, uh, numerous uh, talents. Uh, so uh, we're back. A little technical issues for those listening in the podcast world, but we're back with Cody Crash. Uh, kind of want to dive into some more of uh, your training and stuff like that. Um, uh, I really wanted to ask you about uh, specifically your training with George Dale Isla, the stuff that he kind of does with you, uh, any of the specific stuff that he really tries to teach you through uh, his uh, wrestling training. Oh, yeah, yeah. So since he's super, you know, hardcore into, you know, the strict basics, you know, he's uh, – He'll make sure you leave that place with a fantastic headlock on anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, he's a, a super great trainer. He, you know, on the basics, he knows exactly what he's talking about. You know, and I'm sure you can see that from, you know, Ricky Starks and ACH and all those guys that come from our school as well. Definitely. Um, and, and now you started to, you know, work shows and get your name out there uh, more. Uh, what's it been like kind of, I guess, traveling the scene, uh, I guess, starting specifically in Texas and, and getting your face out to more companies, what's it like kind of, you know, trying to get yourself out there as a wrestler? Man, you know, sometimes it's hard, you know, cause you gotta, you know, so people don't know you, you know, so it's kind of hard to get on some shows, you know, but, um, I've been, uh, here lately, you know, I've been pretty much having a show about twice, twice a weekend, you know, mm-hmm. so things are they just starting to pick up quite a bit now, and uh, I gone to I went to St. Louis, Illinois recently, and I go to I went to Tennessee, and recently I go to Louisiana about once a month as well. So things are things are picking up now. So everything's awesome, um, huh? I was gonna say it seems like you're expanding yourself as well beyond just Texas. I know uh, getting to wrestle for a place uh, in St. Louis, like St. Louis Anarchy, which is you know pretty well established kind of uh, independent wrestling organization. Uh, was it, kinda, oh, yeah, it, was, it was really awesome up there. So uh, do you find it easy, I guess now to kind of, to, you know, get your name out there more. And, and I guess, uh, cause one of the things that a lot of wrestlers sort of talk about is the, the whole idea of travel and then how travel is super important, I guess, you know, with, with your career, uh, especially I know for you know people in Texas, would you say that's the case? Would you say that's really helped, you know, the fact that you're willing to travel, you know, to different places? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it, it's helped a lot traveling because um you know every single you know almost every single Texas wrestler you know that's from Texas tells me get out you know is you know uh, just to try to get out as quick as you can you know and expand you know it's just and that's pretty much anyway you don't want to get stuck <laughs> in that same spot you don't want to be the you don't want to be that popular high school kid that gets stuck there you know is that big fish little pond you know. Definitely. Uh, uh, do you have, I, I guess, any uh, maybe either long term or even some short term goals as far as people you'd like to get in that ring with and, and people you really want to sort of get your hand at, at wrestling against? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you kind of broke up there. My bad. Oh, oh, no problem. Uh, people, are there any people that you'd really love to sort of get in the ring with one day and and and, and get the opportunity to work? Oh yeah, like my like my number one, I think so far is kind of tied it's between uh between like three people. It's like Kenny Omega, Marty Skrull, and uh, Tommy End. Those are the <laughs> three that are that stick out to me the most because I look up to those guys a lot on the independent scene. Definitely, and obviously, right now you being sort of on the independent level, uh, I guess is is your goal uh, is a long-term goal, I guess you could say somewhere like, you know, a, co- a company like WWE or, or is there any other sort of way you kind of, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, 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 it's long-term, you know, I just, it's all I've ever wanted to do since I was a little kid. So I want to try to, you know, do my best and go to, you know, go to the top, you know, is hopefully WWE is an option one day, but uh, I'd also like to go to Japan as well. And, ring of honor and pretty much you know just every top place you know trying the hardest to get there absolutely um uh we also have some some sort of regular questions we tend to ask guests here on the show and, and kind of pick their brain on stuff from that end uh uh one of the ones we always ask is uh what are you watching currently wrestling wise uh either for studying or recreation is there any sort of wrestling that you kind of have your eye on currently right now um <laughs> it's kind of new japan and uh, Ring of Honor, and kind of like some older stuff. You know, I've had uh, a couple wrestlers tell me I've watched Steve Carino and just guys like that. You know, because it's really good to 
look at their matches. You know, I try my hardest to pick every single person's brand that I meet. Absolutely. And and I guess uh, kind of the big thing we kind of end off, and I know you're, 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 you're a little over a year in, but uh, would you uh, be able to think of, you know, in the whole scale of your time in indie wrestling, uh, what do you think is, uh, in your opinion, uh, the best thing about independent wrestling and the worst thing about independent wrestling? Um, damn. You know, the best thing is, you, you know, you're kind of, you know, you kind of do your own thing when you're not under like a specific contract. You know, if you're not like under like a lockdown contract, you know, you can do, <laughs> you get to travel a lot. And uh, another hard thing is, man, you know, you don't, you might not get paid a lot and it's kind of hard, kind of a struggle. That's like the worst thing I believe is the, is the struggle with, you know, cost of money at, t- at times. Absolutely. But, uh, the be- you know, the be- yeah, and the best thing, you know, is meeting a lot of people. You know, you meet so many people everywhere. Awesome. Definitely. Uh, uh, if uh, people who are watching this want to check you out or uh, kind of see the stuff that you're doing, where are the kind of places they can check you out as far as, far as upcoming bookings that you have uh, uh, going on? Oh, yeah. You can um, – so we got ACW uh, in Austin, Texas, RCW in San Antonio – and I will be in Corpus Christi at Victory Pros this Saturday, actually. And um, I also have another show next Friday as well. And that's at our school show where George Daly Isla holds his shows at the APW shows in Pflugerville. If anybody wants to come check those out, they're really fun to watch. And uh, I'll be at RCW as well this Friday right now. Awesome. Very cool. Heads up for the next two weeks, so. Very nice. Uh, so definitely, uh, thank you very much, Cody, for coming on and kind of talking with us and and, and sharing your stories a bit and, and, and uh, telling people uh, a little bit more about you. Uh, if you're uh, listening to this and want to check out Cody Crash, be sure to check out any of those uh, upcoming dates for him uh, and go support uh, your independent wrestling talent. Uh, so uh, yeah. once again, <laughs> thank you very much, Cody, for uh, coming on <laughs> and talking with us. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for having me on, man. You have a good night. No problem. Uh, and we're going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, take a look at some of the stuff that we have uh, going on in the world of Storytron Media, and uh, we'll be right back. Hey guys, it's Matt Light, Pittsburgh Magazine's 2014 and 2015 winner, best comedian, and cancer survivor. Come check me out Friday, April 8th, for a night of stories, laughter, barjitsu beer pong, and prizes that will be sure to make this a night to remember. I'll be performing with some of the best comedians in the Steel City. Portions of the proceeds benefit the Testicular Cancer Awareness Foundation. Special thank you to our event partners, FN Vodka, Ultra Premium Vodka, Pittsburgh Improv, Pittsburgh's premier comedy club, Sorgatron Media, podcast, video production, and creative media, Pittsburgh Podcast Network, for Pittsburgh by Pittsburgh, River's Edge Radio Network, Pittsburgh's voice for local music. Comedians for Cancer, Friday, April 8th at Dave & Buster's in the Waterfront, the only place to eat, drink, play, watch sports, and laugh all under one roof. Get those tickets, folks. Go to barjitsu.com or showclicks.com and search Comedians for Cancer. That was the time that my husband would be in the basement and he'd always be talking and I never knew who he was talking to. And then I came down one night And then I realized he was talking on a podcast with a bunch of people. (laughs) He didn't have pants on. And we're back in, uh, of course, a little bit from uh, Looking for a Group uh, over there uh, where we had our 10-year anniversary party of Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you, everybody who came out and celebrated with us and Looking for a Group for hosting us. Uh, so I um, want to get into the indies, and really all the indies happened around WrestleMania. We talked a lot about what happened at WrestleMania, at NXT TakeOver, at Raw, uh, Raw After Mania, on our Mayhem After Mania on episode um, um, uh, 514 of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. But, Eamon, you witnessed in person so much of the weekend. Well, uh, I did. parts of the weekend. I, I, I don't know. Well, so, I, so, wait, wait, so my understanding, let me, wait, wait, before we get into it, so my understanding is uh, very, very close to the show, or to the weekend, you said, I'm getting to Dallas. <laughs> 
I got a yeah, I got a I got a, a, a hair and I said, you know what, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Why not? Um, yeah, and 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 I went up to see some of the indie stuff because there obviously there's so much happening this past weekend that I think it'd be kind of lame not to go and, and, and not see something. Um, and I, I saw a good amount. I, I I say that I probably only saw half of really like the indie stuff that was happening that weekend because there was really a whole lot of stuff. Um, uh, I caught a, a mostly well, pretty much all of that I caught was the uh, WWN live stuff that they were doing. Uh, which included uh, two Evolve events, uh, a CCW event, and I got to catch like the first hour or so of a Shimmer event before I had to head home. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was a really fun time. Uh, a lot of really phenomenal wrestling. I think that's obvious to say. Um, a lot of really fun stuff from this weekend that I got to see. Um, it, it's cool that yeah, it, it felt like a little hub of like you know all in, you know of of really phenomenal independent wrestling and. and and, you know, getting to see guys that I normally wouldn't get to see sort of in the state of Texas wrestling, you know, it's all, all in one place, you know, it's, it's really cool. Awesome. Awesome. So, so what was, uh, you know, what, what was it like, uh, from show to show, uh, what kind of surprised you? I mean, have you, you've been, did you, did you do this experience when you went to New Orleans for 30? Uh, I kind of did. I will say I kind of diversified my time a bit more when I was in New Orleans. I, I think, First time I went to Ring of Honor, then I did uh, uh, Shimmer, then I did WrestleCon uh, event that they were doing, uh, and then eventually Mania. Uh, this one, I kind of stuck it to one place, I guess you could say. Uh, <laughs> that place being Eddie Dean's Ranch, which is a very interesting place to put on a wrestling show. Um, ex- ex- uh, ex- those- yeah, explain to me this place, because you, you, you dropped some lines from it about uh, on the other show. Yeah, yeah. And for those that didn't watch, because uh, uh, all these shows actually that I were at were on high pay per view, uh, so th- that's also a very cool aspect of it. But like, uh, for those that didn't watch the high pay per views, the the venue is when you get inside the venue, I should say, it's very like old tiny Western theme. Like, like the backdrops are like 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 say you were walking through like an old timey like sort of like like town basically, like like the like what you would traditionally think of like sort of, I guess, Southern, you know, old Southern, you know, style, I guess, setup. It's very weird. Um, very weird backdrop to sort of watch wrestling on. Uh, I believe at, at the, the WWE super show, which I wasn't able to go to two days, did like a moon solo off of one of the balconies. That was like the two story building balcony, fake balcony thing, which was interesting. Um, I, I it was a cool place to do a wrestling venue. Uh, it, it was very big as well. They, uh, I know the second of all event had their largest crowd to date. They drew uh, over a thousand, which I think is very cool. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, it, it was very awesome. Um, uh, but yeah, no, it's a nice little place to do a wrestling show. I felt uh, uh, once you get down to it, once you get past the, the fact that it's called AD Ranch. Um, but no, it was really fun. Um, <laughs> Very different shows. I'll start with the Evolve shows because I think those are kind of like, to me, to me, I feel the the show, possibly the show stealing shows of the weekend, especially if you want to talk about indie wrestling. Dev, uh, you know, definitely, I would even argue of everything that happened in the weekend. Um, really phenomenal talents uh, on those events. Um, uh, I gotta say, the MVP probably of the entire weekend was a, a little guy that you probably should know by now, named Will Osprey out of the UK. Uh, who delivered so much good wrestling. Uh, amazing match with Zack Sabre Jr. on the first night, who was also amazing. Uh, and then his match with Ricochet that I got to see on the second night, which was out of this world, just ridiculous. Um, uh, and then I know he was in a six-man tag on the WWE Super Show, which I hear was amazing as well. Um, that guy has all the potential to be the biggest star in the world, I feel. He has such an athletic ability. Um, uh, just, you know, I get, literally got a hundred, uh, a hundred thousand, a thousand people, I should say, to stand on their feet. Like nobody was sitting for for that match. Like it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and um, it looks like a ver- the the Twitter seems to be a, 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 a just a just a highlight reel of these guys' matches. I, I'm looking at the around the Indies uh, article. And is that him doing a dab mid match? Uh, I I can't remember if he dabbed. I know he was wrestling Ricochet. I get. To, I can assume Ricochet was a big dabber. Um, uh, he, no, he, he's he's amazing. Um, uh, uh, any all of the UK talents actually that they had down there, which I think I feel that was a big thing. I feel like 
um, we're starting to see a real resurgence. Like, I feel like the nineties were very much based around the Mexican talents, mm -hmm. especially with the stuff you were getting like WCW and stuff like that. You know, the two thousands, you start to see more of the Japanese talent kind of rise to popularity. Uh, I feel like the British talent's next because there's so much great talent in the UK right now. And I think it was a lot of it was on display at the, at the evolved show with Will Ospreay, with Zack Sabre Jr., uh, with Tommy End, with uh, Marty Skrull, who may be one of my favorite wrestlers. Um, just the look and his presence and, and, and the stuff that he, you know, put on in that rank. He put on, you know, entertaining contests on both nights. He was amazing. Um, a lot of really fun matches. Uh, uh, obviously, your recognizable talents are, were amazing. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of great talents that kind of stuck out to me. Uh, 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 a town who I had only vaguely heard of, but never got to see live named, uh, Fred Yehi, uh, who wrestled, uh, um, uh, he, he wrestled Marty's girl on the first night of evolve and then wrestled Chris hero on the second night. And, and both of those matches were phenomenal. Um, I really love evolve the, the stable in evolve right now called uh, catch point, uh, which is made up of uh, Matt Riddle. Who's a former UFC fighter turned wrestler. Uh, Drew Gulak, Tracy Williams, uh, TJ Perkins, who TJ Perkins was being teased for the World Cruiserweight Series. So very cool to see. Um, yeah, that evolved, both of all the shows were really, really stacked. And I really enjoyed uh, uh, both nights of those events, especially because they were so stacked with talent and, and had such a, a really phenomenal atmosphere to them. Right. Sorry, I'm showing some of the videos on here. I didn't realize they had audio <laughs> <laughs> oh, from, from the weekend. Just a loud bullhorn. Sorry, like boo! <laughs> boo your review! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, awesome, awesome. Uh, so, uh, And again, these are all on iPay-Per-View. People can go check them out and, and look for Eamon in the audience. Of course, you probably won't be able to see me. No, no, he's he's not. There, he's not a he's, not, he's a not a large people. person either. Not he's a uh, You he's may a, you may see me. I, I think the most chance you'll have to see me is on the CCW one, which was a bit of a lighter crowd because mm -hmm. um, it was happening during NXT, which I I think was the big kind of yeah. I, I I can understand why it was lighter. Mm -hmm. um, that was an interesting show, okay. uh, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> first CCW show ever. Uh, they had like a six way you know, junior heavyweight match that was just like the, you know, your kind of high spotty kind of crazy stuff, which was amazing and, and really, really fun. Um, uh, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard, seen that. I, I mentioned Drew Gulak in the Evolve uh, uh, portion of the show. Uh, but he uh, is in a tag team in CZW uh, with his brother Rory called the Amazing Gulaks, which if you've never seen before, you need to see because they just come out in like, like glittery jackets and shoot off uh, uh, confetti cannons and do like weird like tumbles like towards mm -hmm. people in the corner, which is amazing. Um, they, 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 they had an elimination tables match with Chuck Taylor as their tag partner, um, which was pretty great. Um, I saw the main event was a barbed wire, no were barbed wire match, which was really crazy with, with a uh, friend of the show, Matt Tremont taking on Masada. Nice. Um, uh, it was kind of crazy. Um, uh, de definitely fun experience uh, 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 with CZW, to say the least. Uh, quite the interesting experience. Um, and then uh, I had, sh uh, got, like I said, I got to see the first hour of Shimmer uh, on the second night uh, before I had to head off. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, there was their, it was their Heart of Shimmer uh, title tournament to crown the first ever Heart of Shimmer champion. Uh, and, and from the reports I saw after the, the set with the semifinals and the finals as well, all really great matches. Uh, and I, and the first round really stuck out for me with, uh, uh talents like, uh, 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 Candice LeRae and her match with Cherry Bomb, I think is one that you should definitely seek out. Both of those are very talented. Uh, Cherry Bomb recently signing with TNA. Um, uh, you have, uh, uh, uh Lufisto, who is, a uh, uh, a well-renowned independent wrestler, uh, taking on somebody who uh, actually has worked for Inspire Pro in the past, but uh, uh, is starting to get more recognition, which I'm very glad to see, which is Nicole Savoy, who's based out of California, who was amazing. Uh, uh, she's grown even since I saw her back at Inspire Pro. Um, and she actually won the whole tournament at the end, uh, be, uh, becoming the first champion. Very, very cool to see. Um, yeah, and it was a lot uh, from, I only got to see five matches pretty much, but those five matches really all delivered. And, and yeah, they were. There was some really good stuff on that card as well. 
Um, uh, overall, of the stuff that I saw of that weekend, like I said, I think it was very worth going to. Um, and and I think as I guess uh, it's cliche to say, but the whole WrestleMania experience of you know there's stuff other than WrestleMania that's happening. There's stuff other than the WWE stuff that's happening. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, go you know diversify the stuff that you're doing. And I mean, there was not just you know Ring of Honor had a, had two shows that weekend. Uh, WrestleCon had a show. There was like a lucha show, like a really random lucha show that had like Pentagon Junior and and Aerostar and guys like that. Um, uh, Rikishi had like some sort of show uh, that he ran, I think, with his, with that had like Alpha and Sika and, and those guys. Like there was a lot of stuff that happened that weekend. Um, uh, they, but it, it was very cool to see. Awesome, awesome. So, so what what is, what do you think is the best strategy if you're looking at WrestleMania next year, which is going to be in Orlando? Of course, we know pretty much WWE will probably probably follow the same pattern and have a four night stand the way that it has. Um, yeah. Like, what do you think? Like, if you you were to go back and you could pick any semblance of, uh, you know, looking at an indie weekend that's pretty much scheduled like this weekend to uh, the to the main WWE stuff, what would you uh, uh, for a first time or going to WrestleMania weekend? What mix of that? Presuming I want to go to WrestleMania, let's say, right. uh, 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 to look at for something like that. What what should what should a newer fan look out for? Well, I think uh, in uh, I'll I'll say I'll say this not no back on the CZW show which I really enjoy but uh, if if I was able to I probably would have gone to NXT Takeover right, uh, right. problem was it was sold out and all the tickets that were available online were two hundred fifty bucks Ooh. which is kind of yeah insane um, but yeah um, I personally would say diversify yourself a bit and and see a little bit of everything um, but at the same time I would also argue you know if you're into the evolved style of independent wrestling, those kind of char- the, the talents that you would see in like a PWG or, or, or top level talents from, you know, international towns like that. I would say go to those shows. Uh, if you're a fan of, you know, well-established talents, talents that have a bit of name recognition, I would stick towards like a WrestleCon mm-hmm. where you have, you know, your Matt Hardy's, your, you know, list of former WWE talents that you can get an autograph from or whatever. Um, you know, I think it's it, luckily there's enough. There's so much in that happening to where you can really mold your own experience. I feel based off your personal interests. So it's kind of roll, um, roll your own WrestleMania. Yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, I, I really, I obviously, I don't know how things are going to go in Orlando. Um, I really love that this year, everything was pretty close. Uh, like literally where all the evolves, where I was at, I literally just had to walk under a, um, I, I think and it's like a highway or whatever, and access and all that stuff was right there. Wow, nice. Like, which which was cool. Access and NXT because they were basically running it where they were like adjacent to where they were running right, access. It, it, right, it was at the convention center more or less, right? Yeah, um, you know it, that's very cool. Um, I know Ring of Honor wasn't even too far from from you know that stuff as well. So uh, it, it's it's it. I think it's nice to kind of have a very, you know, have it as close as possible. Uh, New Orleans, I was kind of like New Orleans. I don't think was too bad, but we, we you did have to commute for that. Right, and, and, and New York was like that too because uh, WrestleCon was up the highway from MetLife Center where everything was there because Izod is across the street. So mm-hmm. like they had the I think they had everything at the Izod across the street uh, or in the parking lot, whatever of, of MetLife because uh, it's a whole like. Uh, the complex up there with a lot of sporting uh, uh, stadiums and, and, and complexes. Uh, and then yeah. there was like a convention center down the highway a bit. And then the wrestling shows were throughout New Jersey and New York, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that definitely was a little, probably a little wider than, uh, than, than, than other cases. So, but also I think the but, first, but there's major... so much, there's so much stuff going on. That's great. And, and I, I really love the fact that like I was as, Sami Zayn Nakamura was happening, you know, maybe, you know, le- half a mile away f- from where I was. Uh, I was watching Sami Callahan wrestle Bull Dempsey, oh, and geez. they were both trying to give each other pedigrees. Oh, jeez. Uh, and that's so but, great. It, it, it's a celebration of wrestling, and you have thousands and thousands and thousands of people uh, descending on here. And not 100,000 people went to that, that, that stadium. Not all of them went to a eighteen thousand seat arena for uh, Monday, or I'm sorry, Friday, Saturday, and and Monday. There was a lot else to do that those people had to find to do, and there was a lot of options. And I think that's great that seeing these indies 
create that opportunity. You wonder how many people found those indies because they were half a mile away from NXT that they couldn't get tickets for, right? Yeah. You know, how many people stumbled into a, a, a new indie that they've never seen before? And I think that's I think that's a really exciting opportunity too. So awesome. absolutely awesome. Um, what did you learn from WrestleMania weekend in your trip? Oh God, I learned there is. There's a lot of wrestling. There, there's such a thing as too much wrestling. <laughs> I, I loved it. It was really fun. Um, yeah. But holy crap, that was a lot of wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it literally, I, I spent, like some of the shows I, I eventually spent, like like the CTLB show I enjoyed, but there's also, like I spent it a lot talking to local wrestlers who I, I, I saw there and some people like who I you know worked with and inspired who I haven't seen in a while who I've yeah. to talk to, uh, which was very cool. It's like a reunion. Um, but yeah, it was it was interesting. It, it was it was uh, 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 quite the quite the weekend. I was I was happy for the weekend. Good, good, good to hear it. Well, hey, it's always next year. Maybe we'll all make it down to Orlando and have a big mayhem gathering as well around Let's do everything. That. Let's do that. Let's make it happen. Down, it's a little more accessible. That's like kind of the nice nexus of traveling for probably the both of us right uh yeah but anyways yeah this has to happen i haven't i haven't seen Eamon. i haven't seen Eamon since i haven't seen you too long jeez was it was the last time you're out here the time when uh daniel bryan was not uh, a member of the wwe or no i actually came a year after that well, I, after I came that. for that but like, yeah, I, came, yeah. I also came a year after jeez that was when that was when i wore the soap monkey head and was real sweaty <laughs> <laughs> them were the days well thank you so much Eamon at Eamon 2 please on the tweeters um, and I, that's it I, I think you covered most of it other than I do want to share the one image of a bear apparently getting pal driven off the top rope in Kaiju Big Battle yes I, I wish I would have gone to Kaiju I was mm-hmm. very I was very sad I couldn't go to Kaiju because uh, the best part about the, the second day of the Evolve show was walking past the entrance and the broken buildings from the Kaiju show still being like we're, we're laying right next to the entrance of the, of the venue. And like, like the, whatever the plantain is that wrestles, like his costume was just lying there. Like it's, it's very, uh, it's like, very, like the odd remnants of, of, of a party gone wrong the night before. Like you saw like Dr. Cubes, like dismembered head, like just next to all <laughs> these like broken buildings. Um, oh jeez. I also really love that, uh, in one day, in a span of like maybe like tw- 10, 10 hours, I guess, Kota Ibushi managed Johnny Gargano and Drew Galloway at the Evolve show, then went to NXT to, to be in the crowd with Funaki, then went to go wrestle for Kaiju Big Battle. <laughs> Wow, busy weekends for everybody. Hey, it's, but it's great to see everybody doing business and doing great. I mean, I, I just saw the first posting from Joe Dombrowski finally uh, breaking radio silence because apparently his phone broke partly into his trip down there. Uh, I can't wait to see what he's got going on. I, I did think I, I I wasn't able to go up to him and say hi because he was definitely. I saw him rushing out somewhere, but I did see Joe Dombrowski that weekend. He was wearing a very bright red t- red button up oh, t shirt. Oh yes, yes. He was wearing the suit, like the full red suit, or uh, the, well, the, the suit was the the jacket was off because okay. he was he was he was going somewhere. But because <laughs> have you seen the yellow jacket? You can't miss it. <laughs> uh, I took a picture with the jacket. Joe Dombrowski just happened to be in the picture, um, but <laughs> but no, uh, so so great uh, to see all that happening. I can't wait to hear his stories uh, from him. Uh, I'm sure you'll recall some of them as you 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 leave your mania haze. Hey, let us know. Did you make it to WrestleMania weekend? Did you check any indies out? In that case, or did you watch any of the IP reviews? Let us know. Of course, uh, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com four one two two zero six WMS zero. I want to hear from you. Let's hear, let's find out. Um, and let's know any other indie wrestling that you're digging in and out of whatever area. You know, it's it's like Christmas. Keep it all along. Keep the mania in the indie wrestling all year long and support the indie wrestling. Amen. And amen to please on the tweeters. Of course, yes, voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Uh, my voice is about to go, so I'm going to say until next time: support indie wrestling. Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Act wild, steady sipping jack now Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com